Hey folks, this is Jaxler, and this is part three of the Neopets uh, Darkest Fairy Any% Percent tutorial. So if this is the first video you're catching, make sure that you uh, go back and watch the other parts, otherwise none of this will make any sense, okay? So last video we covered getting the Cloak of Heroes uh, super early. Um, I don't know why it didn't split. Um, but now we're um, going to move on to this next section, which is going to cover getting to Illicent's Glade and defeating Narfus here, okay? So, um, before we continue, let's talk about the acts of the game real quick. So, the game, uh, if you've played, uh, hopefully you've played this game before. But this game's divided up into four acts. So, act one is as Tor, um, and ends, uh, when you get back to the castle and get chased down by the three fairy sisters and escape. Act two takes place in Fairyland with Roberta. Um, act three is normally when you get Tor and Roberta to, uh, to come together. Defeat a bunch of bosses, save basically every town in the game, yada, 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 okay? And then, um, Act 4 is what takes place in Altador and stuff. Now, Acts 1 and 3 both take place in the same set of areas, right? So that's part of the reason we were able to go get the Cloak of Heroes so early. Um, but the next part of the run is going to involve, uh, the next major goal of the run is to hit the major crucial story flags to be able to trigger the end of Act 1. Because right now, we could just go into the Mirador Castle right now. But because we haven't done everything we needed to yet, the game still thinks we're training to be a Squire. So we needed to go do a couple things to trick the game into thinking that we're done with Squire training and that, oh, hey, we're a knight now. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna make our way out of Kogum here. Now, I highly recommend as you go down and up these slopes that you hold down L2, there's a lot of places here uh, that can give you auto hops uh, if you're not exactly careful. Okay? Especially down these slopes here. And then we're just going to go ahead and cross the bridge. Um, there is an advanced strat here that you can do to skip over this guy's text box that saves like four seconds, but uh, it's pretty difficult and it's not worth covering in this tutorial. Okay? So. So we'll slowly walk. And then uh, we're going to take a immediate left out of this bridge and hit the water. So L2 to fall off the ledge. And that puts us all the way back here. So we're going to go back through Meridel to get to Illicent's Glade here, okay? I highly recommend not using a Mirka Speedrun Potion for a while. Um, generally speaking, if I don't plan on using a Mirka Speed Potion for a while... I unequip it and equip either red or, or purple droopies over it just to make sure that I don't accidentally use one. Something you need to keep in mind is that when you fall into water, it will remove any status effects that you have, good or bad. So if you fall into water uh, while you have a Mirka Speed Potion activated, then it will cause you to lose that effect and you basically just wasted an entire potion's worth. Um, so that's why you didn't see me use any as soon as I bought them, okay? All right. So navigate your way to here, and then we're just going to, uh, again, use the moat to drown. And then uh, just go straight this way, and we're going to take this path between the two buildings right here. And this will take us into Meridel Plains here. Now, Meridel Plains is kind of uh, a gateway to multiple different areas here. But we're going to be using this as, um, th this has the entrance to Illicent's Glade, which is... Uh, the really big, uh, which has all the big story flags for making sure that we can clear Act 1, okay? So go ahead and run off this cliff. Uh, this seems random, but it'll put us further down the river. And then make sure you grab this water moat. This water moat is incredibly important, okay? Try to avoid grabbing these coins because they can cause a little bit of extra lag, especially on the fat PS2 systems. And we're going to make our way this way. So now, normally, as you might remember casually, the bridge to Illicent's Glade is broken until you do all the Squire stuff. Uh, but getting uh, the cloak is going to allow us to glitch basically past the bridge and even let us skip the main Illicent's Glade sequence here in Act 1. So in order to do this, we're going to do a trick known as a ledge fly. Now, the ledge fly is, like, one of the biggest reasons why we went so far out of our way to get the cloak. And it's performed as such. So what you want to do is get to the very edge of a ledge, okay? For, the, for this particular one. There's exceptions to that rule, but generally speaking, you want to be towards the edge of a ledge, okay? 
So something you can do to set yourself up is purposely fall off the ledge and then get back up. Face the direction, uh, face your camera the direction you want to go, and then hit L2, and that'll snap toward her to face the direction you want to do this trick in. So this is called a ledge flight. So what will happen is if we successfully pull off the trick, Tor will start flying through the air while it looks like he's holding a ledge. And that's because we activate sort of a jump and a ledge grab at the same time. And that causes some really funky stuff to happen with our gravity. And it also disables wall collisions on certain walls, okay? So face this wa rock wall, okay? Just make sure you're not, like, facing super this way. Uh, out in this angle is... Totally fine. This uh, angle is rather lenient. So what you're going to do is you're going to pause, hit square to swap to the cloak. And now to perform the ledge fly, you have to have the cloak on. And then you're going to hit circle. So circle is going to automatically pull out your sword, which will take off your cloak. And watch the FPS counter when I do this. It causes a ton of lag, okay? So doing that um, gives us a bunch of lag frames. That makes this trick a lot more lenient, okay? So what you do is after you hit circle, you're going to uh, you're going to hold down on the left stick and X after you start holding down, okay? So watch my uh, controller for the timing. It should look something like this. Generally speaking, you want to hit X when you see the screen flash to white, and you should land around here. So, I'm going to pop back in bounds here, uh, take a death and just show you that a couple more times. So taking a drone right there will put you back right here, so you can just jump back in bounds right there to keep practicing this, okay? Um, this is, um, it might look a little bit tricky uh, to see me do it, especially with the inputs, but this trick is very, very lenient, okay? All right. So, again, get your angle by falling off the ledge and then climbing back up. Pivot tour with L2. Hold L2 and tilt the camera to face the direction you want. Equip the cloak. Hit, you hit circle, hold back, and then when you see the screen flash white, start holding X. All right, that was holding X too early. There you go. And if you do it right, you should get a straight angle. Now, something that can happen, and I'll show you an example of this, is if you're standing too far away from the ledge, so let's say you're about here, you can still do a ledge fly, but you'll get this really weird angle. The angle that you start ledge flying at is dependent on how close to the ledge you are. In some cases, it might actually be useful to get a lower angle ledge fly. But you want to make sure that you're as close to the ledge as possible for this one, so that you go in as straight a direction as possible. And what this will do is it'll ledge fly us through the rock wall and onto this uh, platform that extends out of bounds here. Okay. So once you're here, what you want to do is sort of follow around along the inside of the rock wall. Keep going through here, but don't go too far to the right. This should do, okay? What you don't want to do is go too close to this rock wall, or else you'll go back in bounds. Now, there is a backup that I will show you in just a, uh, in just a few minutes if you happen to get uh, stuck back in bounds and it loosens glade. Uh, but that will make more sense a little bit later up here. Okay. So now what you're going to do is once you get to about here, um, face about roughly about this way, and then start falling off the ledge here. All right. So once you get to about here, our goal is to reach uh, the terrain that's marked over here by this X. Okay. So you see how there's, it's, it will um, make a little more, it'll be easier to see once it comes into view. But there's a little bit of terrain that's below y, y equals zero here, um, and we can fall onto it. Okay, so I'm aiming sort of for this uh, subsection of the platform that's cut off by this wall right here, holding L2, and I should fall down here. Okay, now get to here, and we're going to stop here for a moment, and I'll explain this next part. Okay, so... We're going to do another upwarp similar to um, the thing we did at the very start of the run, where the game thinks that we should be in bounds at a certain height, and it'll just warp us up there, okay? So up this way are the treetops of Illicent's Glade. And so normally to get to the treetops, you have to save all the knights. 
Uh, but because of all the tomfoolery we did, none of the lights knights are loaded in. All right, so in order to get up there, if you notice, as I start to walk in here, you'll start to see that I eventually hit a wall and I can't go anymore. What you're going to do is you're going to hold run, so hold hard one, and then you're going to start running to the left and jump. Um, there's not really too much of a specific timing. Just start running. Th Once you start running to the left, jump. And you should jump up here. Okay? So you'll land on, like, this platform out here. Okay? So I'm going to go back uh, out of bounds to show you this again. Okay? So what you do is... Um, ooh, that's not good. Uh, I'm going to have to... Uh, give me one second. Don't use this potion here. I'm just unloading this for um, teaching purposes. Do, 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 do. Don't mind me. I just screwed up my own tutorial. Hugh, hugh, hugh. Okay, there we go. Don't pay this any mind. I'm just. I just want to show you this one more time. Okay. I'm just cool like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to fall back down into here. Walk up to this. Hold R1. Run and jump to the left. And you should eventually hit this, okay? Now, there is a chance that you get a certain angle that puts you up at the top platform that's above here. If that happens, drop down to the slower platform. I'll explain why. So once you're here, uh, what I recommend doing is you essentially want to hold towards the fence... And continually inch your way here. And then eventually, you can get up here. And now you're at the tree tops, okay? So before we continue, I want to show you a backup in case you fall, like, off the tree tops. And you need to get back out of bounds, okay? Let me just kill this guy for your entertainment. Later, buddy. Okay. So, here's where you need to go in order to do the backup, in case you fall down. So, if you fall down, don't reset. Don't worry. There's a save, okay? Alright, let me just kill this guy. He's gonna... Don't worry, you really don't need much leaf mode. Um, okay. So, from the middle save point, um, to the right of this big tree, go across the bridge... And you're going to go off this cliff and up these vines. Now, you're actually going to see this set up for a ledge fly later uh, when we exit here. But that's gonna we're going to save that for the next video. To get back out of bounds, what you want to do is go to roughly where this leaf is, fall off the ledge, and then climb back up. And then tilt, uh, focus the camera so that Tor's left ear is roughly about the middle of this, uh, of this big green streak on the left. Moss streak, rather. Okay? Set up about here. And now something you also need to know about ledge flies is depending on your angle relative to the edge that you're ledge flying from will also have an impact on your angle. So it's a combination of distance and the way Tor is facing. Okay? So if you want, if you go, like, perpendicular, you'll get, like, a straight angle. If you face this way... Um, you're less likely to get a straight angle, and straight angles can't soft lock here, so just... Word of warning. Okay. So now we're gonna do a ledge fly, so circle back, start, or X. And then I should ledge fly through the wall right here. And then you'll eventually see Tor ledge grab. Let go. And that'll put you out about here. Now, if I remember correctly, yeah, that should all be still invisible wall. Okay, so what you wanna do is you have to go and reload the... You have to go... Base, so you come in from this way, fall along to the left, and you're just going to kind of hold towards the collision here. And you should eventually pop up on the something. So just keep holding to the left against these invisible walls. And eventually once you come up here, you should pop up somewhere. It's a bit of a slow backup, but it's the best way to recover. So hitting this will load a different map, which gets rid of an invisible wall. And then you can just return to the trick as normal and try again. Okay? So let's do that one more time. Uh, because it is a little bit weird. Alright, so again, hold L2 to fall off the ledge while still running. 
walk until you stop, hold R1, run and jump to the left. All right, and sometimes you'll fall. That's okay. Sometimes what can also help is um, once you see yourself, um, once you go far enough to the left um, and get a feel for when you up warp, you can start moving to up and to the right to sort of wrap around and grab the ledge. So that can be kind of helpful too. Okay. So again, once you get up here, keep jumping around the railings and ledge grab when you need to, okay? And then you can just ledge grab right here and you're back in bounds. Okay. So now what we need to do is uh, follow the direction I'm going through the treetops here. In order for the Narfus fight to load properly, we need to hit a crucial flag uh, that gets set when we hit a checkpoint trigger at the very start of the treetops. So you're going to see me hold L2 again as I go off some of these slopes and some of these bumps along the way. Not a huge deal, um, but just something to be wary of to make sure you don't auto-hot too much. Now what you're going to do is go right over this gap right here, stand right here for a sec, and then that should load in the trigger for the Nerfus fight, okay? Alright, so now it's at this point, um, as we're progressing through here, um, okay, just, uh, continue to follow where I'm going for a bit, uh, never mind that, we'll talk about that as soon as we get to Norfus. What I would recommend, um, when you're starting out, is having a save file right before Norfus. It can be very helpful to practice the upcoming boss fight, as well as the next segment. I find it super helpful. Something to also note, though, I have an address uh, for free McBoot users to load straight into the Narfus fight. One of the issues, though, is it'll pluck you right into the fight, and the position that Narfus is in uh, when you load in via uh, the uh, hack pack is different than where he is when you fight the, uh, the boss in vanilla. So that's just something to be aware of. Okay, now before the boss, make sure you equip the Super Nova note. For some reason, this boss doesn't cause your Nova, like any of your moats, to lose durability, okay? All right, at the start of the fight, this is going to sound kind of weird, but you're going to walk up to him and kind of mash circle, but not super crazy fast. What can happen sometimes is if you do this, sometimes he'll just kill uh, like a, a giant chunk of his health bar. So I'm going to walk up to him slowly. Okay, I missed the thing. So hold shield during his attacks, and then as soon as he's done, go for these super delayed attacks. And then eventually he'll let you into this cutscene after taking enough uh, blocked hits. Alright, now you're going to immediately, again, run up to him, hold shield. He usually swings twice, and do... You want to make sure you hit him quickly enough so that, um... He doesn't jump away. Alright, and there you go. So, uh, the fight's a little bit funky. I normally split as soon as I defeat him. Um, so that's kind of the fight that when you're starting out, you kind of have to play by ear. There's, a, there's that gimmick strat, like I said, where you can rapid jab and take a bunch of his health. It's something that's worth experimenting with, okay? All right, so now at this point, um, we're going to be moving on uh, to basically clearing Act 1. So we're going to be covering that in the next video. So this is where Video 3 is going to end now. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or if anything in this video confused you at all, feel free to leave a YouTube comment, uh, DM me on Twitter, or send a tweet at me, or find any of the runners at the Discord, and we'd be more than happy to help you. Um, so yeah. Uh, part four will be covering uh, getting to Meridel Castle and finishing Act One. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you so much for watching.